In this video we're going to look at how to record credit purchases of inventory using both the general journal and the general ledger. So how is this different from transactions we've already seen in Chapter 4? Well, in Chapter 4 we only dealt with cash transactions and you can see that from this scenario here. So Eloise Haynes owns and operates a music store called Maestro Music. In February, they purchase inventory of four Kauai grand pianos using cash. So when we look at this transaction, we can see that the supplier, in this case, it was going to be um, someone else called Piano Palace, let's say, has given us inventory and we are the customer, so Maestro Music. When they've given us that inventory, straight away we've given them cash for that. If we have a look at what we're going to see in Chapter 5, we're now dealing with credit transactions. So the exact same scenario where we're purchasing some pianos from Piano Palace, but this time we're purchasing using credit. So what's going to happen is the supplier, Piano Palace, is going to provide us, Maestro Music, with inventory. But the thing that's different is this transfer of cash. This happens at a later date. So the only difference between the transactions we saw in Chapter 4 and the transactions from Chapter 5 is that in Chapter 4, the inventory and the cash was provided um, on the same day or at the same time, whereas in Chapter 5, or credit transactions, inventory is provided to the business, but the cash is given to the supplier at a later date. So how does this actually work? Well, let's have a look at a bit of a scenario together. You can see the exact same scenario here. On March 2nd, we purchased two Kauai Grand Pianos and they've given us some credit terms of 2 slash 7 N30. And we'll talk a bit about what that means later. Each of those pianos cost us $12,000 plus GST. We didn't actually pay that cash or that amount owing to Piano Palace until March 16. So how do the credit transactions work? Well, there's two parts to the credit transaction. The first part is the credit purchase of inventory. The second part is then the payment, which occurs later. So part one occurs on March 2nd, part two, occurs on March 16. So when we're recording this, we can use our same kind of thinking as when we did cash transactions. So we know that when we buy inventory, that means it's going to affect the inventory account. And because we're purchasing, that means inventory is going to go up, which means that it's going to be a debit. So in this case, I've bought two pianos, each costing $12,000 plus GST, so that means that the inventory account is going to increase by $24,000. Because of GST, and we learned how to record this in Chapter 4, we now need to think about what's happened to our level of GST liability to the um, ATO. So because we are paying out GST, that means that our liability has reduced. So when a liability goes down, it's a debit, and it's going to be 10% of that inventory cost, or $2,400. Now that means that I need to have $26,400 on the credit side. And if I was dealing with cash, that would probably be coming from bank. But because it is credit, I'm now going to be using this account called account payable and I'm going to put the name of that account payable so piano palace so an account payable is a liability and this is a liability increasing I'm going to eventually have to pay back piano palace that twenty six thousand four hundred dollars so I need to do a narration as well and my narration will probably say something like purchased two Kawhi Grand pianos on credit. Invoice A130. Remember I need to say what inventory item, how many, 
and I need to say the source document. Now if we skip forward to the 16th of March, you can see that I made my payment to the account payable. And it's going to look something like this. So March 16, the account payable account. Now remember it's Piano Palace. I need to say which account payable because I might have lots of them. I'm now meeting that obligation or I'm settling that debt. Therefore, the liability is going to go down. So it's going to go down by the full amount because I paid the amount owing. And when I'm paying that, I'm finally giving them cash. So the second account that's going to be affected is going to be bank. So you can see here that the difference is when the cash is transferred. In a cash purchase, the cash would be transferred at the time we bought the inventory, but with credit, it goes to account payable and then we meet that obligation later. So now we've got our journal entries. We now need to transfer that into our general ledger. So you can see on the right there that I've got my journal entries and if we just break those up again, remember that this one here was the purchase of inventory. And if we just change colors, this one here was the payment of cash. Okay. So all we need to do when we're recording in our general ledger is we need to transfer this information over into our ledger accounts. Now, let's start with our inventory. So we know that inventory on March 2nd was debited $24,000. Now we need to write in the cross-reference, where's its friend? What's the other account that was affected? So if we have a look in here, we can see that that $24,000 will also be visible in the account payable for Piano Palace. Now you might need to squeeze this into one line, but it'll be a bit easier to do uh, in your workbooks. So that's that first one done. I need to record the GST clearing. So March 2nd, still on the same date, I debited my GST clearing by 2,400 and the second account that's affected or where else I can find that 2,400 is in account payable. for Piano Palace. Okay. Now the last one is in my account payable um, ledger account itself. So I can see that on March 2nd I credited by 26,400. Now that 26,400, 24,000 of that came from inventory and 2,400 came from GST clearing. So I have to use a double cross-reference there to indicate that. Okay. So that's my transactions done on March 2nd, but I also need to record what happened on the 16th. So on the 16th of March, bank was credited 26,400. So March 16. And my cross-reference here is going to be account payable, Piano Palace. And then over in my account payable, I debited 26,400 on March 16, and that was going to bank. So you can now see the two different kinds of transactions and you can see how they're going to look in the general ledger. So things to be most aware of are to make sure 
that in the account payable uh, ledger that you've got that double cross reference of inventory slash GST clearing. So a source document, what source documents might you see? So you might get a transaction list and you might get some source documents. They're going to be invoices. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the number so you can see this one is A16. And then next to that, it's usually going to tell you what kind of source document it is. Now, the thing that makes these a bit tricky is that in this case, it's got tax invoice written there. And we know that that has to be on every source document. So just because it says tax invoice doesn't mean that it's always an invoice. So we need to look for three other things that can help us know that this is going to be a, um, a credit transaction. So a couple of things to look for. First of all, these are what we call our credit terms. So whenever you see terms on there, that's going to tell you that this is um, a credit transaction. The terms tell you how to repay and when to repay, I should say. So the second thing is this charge to. So you can see that charging someone, you're usually going to charge them on credit. So that's a second hint you can use. The third thing is often source documents will have the amount that's paid so far. And you can see here, that we've paid nil or nothing. So that means that we still owe some money and you can see here it's $2,475. So there's lots of things that you can be looking for to help you understand whether this is a cash or a credit transaction. The most common thing to use is going to be these terms. So reading credit terms, what do these numbers and codes actually mean? It's going to tell you two pieces of information. The first piece of information is the amount of discount that you'll be given from the total if you pay early or if you pay um, quickly. The second thing is going to be when the total amount is due. So looking at these terms 5 slash 7 N slash 30, what this means is the business will receive 5% discount if they pay within seven days. If you don't pay within those seven days, then you owe the full, and we use this word net, amount is due in 60 days. So the number that comes first before the slash is always going to be the amount of discount. The number that comes after the slash is going to be the number of days that you have. So what you may like to do now is have a look at the five examples of credit terms that we've got on the left here and take some time to talk about them with someone else to look at what do these credit terms actually mean. Remember that the first part is around the discount and the second part is around the full amount. One of the common questions that you might get when you're working with credit transactions is around which accounting assumptions or qualitative characteristics are relevant. So these are some examples of things that could be linked to making purchases of inventory on credit. First one is the going concern assumption. The going concern assumption could be used because of when we receive the inventory versus when we pay for it. So Going concern states that the business's life is assumed to be continuous. Therefore, when we're recording credit purchases, we're assuming that the business is going to make that repayment in a future period. You could also talk about this idea of the accrual basis assumption. And this is that different elements of the reports are recognised when they meet the definition. Now this becomes important because it doesn't actually matter when you exchange the cash for products, but the stronger one to apply is going to be going concern. If you're looking for a qualitative characteristic, 
the most common one that you um, could use would be relevance. And this is because we want to make sure that we're including information that makes a difference to our decision making. So when we're recording the uh, purchase of inventory, we need to make sure we're showing that in our inventory account. When we're recording that we have a new liability to account payable, we need to record that in our liabilities section. If we didn't do that, then we would have information that wasn't accurate and wasn't useful to make decisions. The last thing that we'll look at is around the effect of on the accounting equation. So you can see up the top, we've got our two types of, or two parts, I suppose, to the transaction of purchasing inventory on credit. These are the ones we recorded before in the general, um, in the general ledger. So looking at transaction one or the first part of the transaction that occurs on the 2nd of March, we can see that the asset of inventory, so if we just do some coding, the asset is increasing. GST, we will treat that as a liability and because we're paying out GST, that liability is decreasing and account payable well, that's a debt that we owe to somebody and because we have got this inventory for, um, from them but we haven't paid for it yet, that liability will increase. So transferring that information into one of these tables, which you often see in um, assessments, we can say that inventory increased by 24,000. So that is an overall increase, remember that we need to say what the overall effect is, and the overall amount would be 24,000. Now in the liabilities, there's two things being affected. GST, okay, GST clearing is going to be going down by 2,400. The account payable is going up by 26,400. Now remember, you don't need to write this detail in these tables. I'm just doing this to show you the working out. So overall, there is an increase of 24,000. And we can see from our information up here, there's no owner's equity accounts being affected. Therefore, we just write no effect. Make sure you write no effect in there, otherwise you won't get that third mark. So, the second part of the transaction is the 16th. On the 16th, we made that payment. So, we can see that bank is an asset and our bank is going to go down because that money is now going to the account payable. And we've now settled that debt with our liability. Therefore, the liability is going down. So, what does that look like in a table? Well, we would see bank go down 26,400. So overall there would be a decrease and we would see that the liabilities, so the account payable would be going down 26,400. So overall there's a decrease. And once again, there's no owner's equity, therefore, there's no effect. So this pattern is the same for every credit um, purchase of inventory in terms of these kinds of questions. Now remember, these questions can be asked in the form of a table, like we've got up on the screen here, or they can be asked uh, in the form of a paragraph. So you actually need to turn these tables into words. So by now you should be able to record credit purchases of inventory and the payments for those at a later time to the accounts payable.